What is happening, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fresh Hope for a Better You podcast. I'm your host, as always, Alvi Goulet, and I am grateful for once again another beautiful day. We've had lovely weather here in Michigan the last few days, and it has my mood in an all-time high for this year because here in Michigan, we struggle with getting sunlight during the winter, and that is something that always lifts me up, brightens my mood in any chance I can possibly be uh outside i will take it because i've missed it a tremendous amount and a lot of people always hear me talk about how i plan to move to florida because it is the sunshine state and honestly sunlight gives me so much energy it's tough to stay working and stuff when it is sunny out but i always find a way because of my discipline but at the same time i do enjoy being in the sunshine i've even had a couple days where i've done a lot of laptop work outside and just soaking up those rays so that's something i highly recommend for you guys if you're anyone like me that struggles with uh, mental health at all, spend some more time outside, you know, stay active, stay moving and uh, soak up some of that vitamin D. That's great for you. Today's episode is uh, one that a lot of people are always, uh, you know, expressing on social media, like talking about like finding a balance between, you know, your personal life, you know, business and uh, just life in general, finding a balance. But I'm going to tell you guys about the truth of what balance actually is and especially being an entrepreneur. It is very hard to find a balance, which is why I've quit searching for a balance. Many people think that you can have a balance if you're an entrepreneur between, you know, family, relationships, you know, your physical health, your mental health, your business, and how much time you think you're going to put in. A lot of you may see on Instagram and social media is all these people, they're traveling the world, entrepreneurs, all this stuff. And I'm here to tell you that that is simply... Uh, A false reality. There is no such thing as balance when you're necessarily an entrepreneur because you are going to have to give up and make sacrifices or what I like to call invest. Um, When you are making a sacrifice or my way of saying it is investing, you have to give in order to get. And a lot of people don't want to give their life or what lifestyle that they have. They don't want to have to sacrifice family events, gatherings, going out on the weekends and doing all that other stuff that, you know, the typical person gets to do but in the life of an entrepreneur it is very tough to find a balance and do all those things which is why i've chosen to invest my time into other things compared to going out and doing stuff like that yes i do get to spend time with family here and there but it's a lot less than i used to yes i do get to have fun and do cool stuff here and there but it's a lot less than i used to i've had to make the investment into myself and my future and knowing that If I want to truly become successful or great at whatever I am doing or pursuing right now in life, that I'm going to have to invest the time that I would from these other things and move them towards, you know, my goals, my vision and my future and invest the time I could be allocating to, you know, those things I used to do to the new things that are moving me forward in my business and within myself. And a lot of people struggle with this and uh, people that are starting their entrepreneurship journey, they're like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. I get to make my own hours. I can do all this and work a little. But the truth is, if you're an entrepreneur and you're an actual like, you know, true and true entrepreneur that's trying to make something, create a great company, create a great brand, a personal brand or anything like that, you're going to have to give up a lot of those things. I don't get to go and do a lot of the things that I used to. I don't go out on the weekends. I don't go out on the weekdays because simply I start my day at 5 a.m. and I'm usually wrapping my day up at nine o'clock at night when I'm finishing responding to clients and uh, all the other stuff to wind down my day. How I find balance in my life isn't by going out and partying. It isn't necessarily going out and doing stuff on the weekdays with friends and family and stuff like that. It's simply balancing out work, working out, reading, writing, journaling, meditating, and playing with my dog. Those are the things that I spend my time doing. And that is where my balance in my life comes in. Yes, I may work 10, 12 hours a day. Periodically, I will take breaks to go work out. I start my morning off with, you know, my morning cardio. And then I come back, I make my breakfast, I do all that stuff. I journal, I go through my morning routine. And then I go to work, then I dedicate my time to work. And then guess what? When two, three o'clock comes around, I go to the gym, go to the gym for an hour, hour and a half. After the gym, I come home, shower, make my dinner. Guess what? It's back to work. It's back to investing myself. It's back to learning, growing, getting on Zoom calls with people from RTA and, uh, you know, people I'm coaching, talking to them. And then by the end of the time, by the time I'm done with all that, it's eight, nine o'clock at night. Where's the time for your uh, so-called balance? There is no time for balance when you're dedicated to pursuing something great and wanting to become something even better than you are today. It sucks, but at the same time, 
I know it'll all be worth it in the end. I'm sick of seeing all these people on social media, you know, saying that the entrepreneurship lifestyle is so great and I get to do all this and, you know, I just make money without even having to work. And, like, there's a very slim chance that that is ever going to happen to you. I can promise you that. If you want to be successful in anything, any area of your life, you're going to have to make sacrifices or invest the time that you usually would in those things into your, you know, your business, yourself, and things like that. Something that people are always talking about is the fact that when you're an entrepreneur, you really have to make the investment into your business or your personal brand in order to create separation because there is a lot of competition out there in the entrepreneurship game. There's sharks. There's big dogs that, you know, they want to take your business. They want to dominate. They are here to win. If you look at Kobe Bryant and uh, Tim Grover talks about how when he was uh, training Kobe and Michael Jordan, uh, that they were so dedicated. They weren't going out and partying. They were dedicated to their craft, working on their game, always becoming better. And those people are still people to this day that are common to be brought up. And simply because they took the time to invest within themselves and you know work on their craft day in, day out, first person in the gym, last person to leave. That is what it is like in entrepreneurship. If you want to be truly successful during entrepreneurship journey and within your business, you're going to have to dedicate that time and invest into yourself. You're not going to be able to choose to, you know, go party with your friends all the time and do all the same shit. In order to continue to become better, you're going to have to, you know, give up who you used to be. You're going to have to sacrifice or invest into your new self. And you got to leave some shit in the past. You know, that might be friends, that might be family, that might be people that don't operate on the same level as you this is something that i have personally dealt with and it's very hard leaving people behind and realizing that you know that doesn't you know going out doesn't necessarily serve me and my purpose in life anymore me partying on the weekends me doing drugs me simply just wasting time talking to people that i don't reciprocate on any sort of level i mean yes there are some people in my life that it's not about just business entrepreneurship and you know bettering ourselves it's just like I talk to those people here and there because they're good people. Nothing wrong with them. They chose a different route than me, but I don't spend the time that I used to with them. That's for sure. And I love them to death still, but on my journey and where I'm trying to go with my life, I really have to be very aware of who I'm giving my time to and associating and surrounding myself with like-minded individuals, which for me here in Holland, Michigan, it is hard. I have yet to find my tribe in, you know, Mich in Holland, Michigan, because simply it's a laid back town. No one's really an absolute go getter. Like it is very, very hard out here. Everyone wants to, you know, do their nine to five job, then go home, do whatever with their family and friends and stuff like that compared to me where it's like, yeah, I have a huge family, but guess what? Like they're on their path. I'm on mine. And like I, when I can, I will make time to spend time with them because I love them to death and they are my family and they mean the most to me. But they understand that I'm on a mission. I am trying to change the trajectory of my family's future. I'm trying to be the one, as Ed Milet would say, to change everything about my future family and myself. And it is up to me. No one's going to do it for me. No one's coming to save me. It's up to me. And I've done that the past four years of my life with all the time, effort, and energy I've put into developing my discipline, developing my craft, learning, growing, trying to become something different. Deep down, like, I I can't. Like, today, for example, I wanted to sleep in, and I was like, you know what? I don't have a crazy amount going on. You know, I have a lot to do, but it's not a crazy day. Let's sleep in a little bit. And I woke up in a panic because simply I know that if I lack here and I don't allow myself to, you know, stay in my routines and stay on track, that I'm going to start slipping up in other areas. And then I'm going to start falling back in old habits. And once you compromise on one thing, what says you're not going to compromise on another? And that goes with like the balance. Like I do find myself time and time again, always wanting to go out. Like I hear about something and I'm like, damn, it would probably be nice to go do that. But then I think again, it's like, dude, you can't go back to the same life you used to live, bro. You know what path that brings you down. You know where that's going to go with your life. And you really got to realize that is not what you want, dude. You may want this and for a quick second and that thought may come to your head and you're like, oh, that sounds nice. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, no. That's simply not what I want to do. I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to learn. And that is simply how life goes sometimes. In order to grow 
you must, you know, leave some shit behind because it's like, you know, you can't bring everything with you. You know, there's levels to this thing we call life. And, you know, if you want to get up to that next level, you're going to have to drop some shit and leave it at that last level in order for you to go up to the next level. It's too heavy that, you know, you only have so much time, energy and effort. And if you have something that takes up a lot of time, energy and effort, you can't necessarily move forward with that taking up all your time. You have to leave that behind. And that's something a lot of people struggle with. They're like, oh, I want to still be me and the old me. And, you know, that's who I am. Like, no, if you want to become who you really want to become, you're going to have to sacrifice and give that part up. Yeah, if when I weighed 270 pounds, if I was like, yeah, I want to be a successful entrepreneur and do all this stuff and, you know, make an impact and, you know, be able to, you know, network and make all these things happen and stuff. Me approaching someone right now at a lean 190 compared to me approaching someone at 270 pounds, the respect that that person would give me back then compared to now, substantially different. I wouldn't even have told myself back in the day, like, yeah, dude, who would give you respect? Because I certainly wouldn't because you haven't done anything to earn it, dude. You're a lazy piece of crap. And guess what? Now that I've you know made the transition and transformed my life and dedicated it to you know my physical health, my mental health, my emotional health, now I'm a totally different person. Yes, deep down, that fat little boy is still there who always wants to creep out. He wants to come back. But guess what? I have to continue to push him back and put him in check because... That's who I once was. That's not who I'm always going to be. And that is something a lot of people like misjudge and mis misinterpret very often is if someone you're talking to talks about, you know, I'm still the same old person I was in high school, like nothing's changed. Like I've said before, run away from that person because they are not growing. They are not going to better you. And those are the types of people that you don't necessarily need to have in your life as close as they are now as they once were. Because a lot of people realize that, you know, it's it's a tough one to realize that when you're growing, you're going to start noticing things that people do and you're going to be like, hmm, you start questioning it. And then you start questioning yourself on why you're spending time with these people anymore. And it's come to the realization for me that if they aren't here, if I can't sit there and talk to them about, you know, moving up in life and things that, you know, you're looking forward to like things that you're working on right now, whether that be, you know, on your personal self, I don't care if you're an entrepreneur or not. If you're not continually working towards something in life, then what are you doing? And it's tough because, you know, everyone wants their balance. That's a lot of, a lot of people are always talking about balance. Like, Oh, Oliver, you need to find balance. Like, you know, take it easy, skip this workout, come have some drinks. And it's like, first off, I made fitness and nutrition a part of who I am, so I'll never go back to the overweight, sad, depressed person that I once was. And it's not, it's not, it's hard to explain to some people because they truly just don't get it. They're like, ah, you know, you only live once, but it's like, yeah, that is true. So why not make the most of it? Why not experience whatever you possibly can out of life? Why not create something great with your life? Why not? make an impact on others why not become something truly great and so many people they just you know they're lazy it honestly just comes down to them being lazy and that's the toughest thing is like you know for example when i've been going to the stores on saturdays and doing my grocery shopping getting ready for my meal prepping on sunday and every week for the past three weeks i've seen someone in one of those like uh, electric carts that has a cart in the front and every time all three weekends it's been someone extremely overweight and i've taken a notice to what's in these people's shopping carts and it's all this processed high caloric foods that are absolutely trash for your body that you know put them in the position that they're in where they're having to use a drive around cart and it's something very sad it honestly hurts me deep down and like yes i have empathy like yes it does suck but in all reality everyone's given a choice you are given a choice every day you are given a choice what to do with your body physically you are given a choice with what you do with your nutrition what foods you put into your body and people are always like oh eating healthy is expensive that's bullshit because i've just created a you know shopping guide that's actually cheaper than buying all the processed foods and stuff like that and if you're going to you know say oh i don't have the time to meal prep or do all this other stuff well guess what i've actually put together a guide that literally you could eat out every single meal at fast food places and still lose weight 
and still eat healthier than you're going to because every single place has some sort of healthy option. And it just all comes down to is people are lazy, people are uneducated, which is why I'm doing this show, which is why I'm a nutrition and lifestyle coach, which is why I'm truly trying to change the world by simply one person at a time, coaching them, teaching them things that I've learned over the past four years of my journey that I wish someone had taught me right away because it would have saved me a hell of a lot of time. And you guys have heard me talk about it before, like time is the most valuable thing we have because it's something we can never get back. The time that I was talking 10 seconds ago is gone forever. I'll never get that time back. But the only thing I'll ever have right now is this present moment and the future. And if you can start by changing what you're doing in this present moment and continue to do that for a long enough period of time, you can change your life. And that's something that goes back into the balance. If you want to have a balanced life, you're not going to want to choose the entrepreneurship route. You're not going to want to choose like the self-development route because you have to be all in because you want to better yourself. Yes, there's little things you can do here and there to better your life, which that's for most people. But if you're a true go-getter and you want to ultimately become the best version of yourself, you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices and investments within yourself. And people are always talking about, man, Oliver, how did you do all this stuff? Like, how'd you get to where you're at? And it's like, dude, it didn't happen overnight. It just started with little small incremental changes within my daily routines and my habits and stuff like that that got me to this point in my life where, yes, I am a very disciplined, high, highly functioning, you know, driven individual who simply can't sit around. I can't. That has a lot to do with my ADHD, but at the same time, like I can't sit around and do something because one, I have something to do, whether it be for my power list or personally every single day, no matter what, I haven't had a day off from doing nothing in four years. And I'm 25 years old. And when I talked to 21 year olds, when I was 21, I was definitely, you know, not where I was today, but talking like looking back at where I was at 21 to these 21 year olds now, night and day difference. I'm like, man, these 21 year olds don't even know what life's truly about. And I mean, I was still figuring it out at 21, but I definitely had a, you know, a game plan that I started running at that age. And a lot of people don't, and which is why I'm always referring people to like Andy's podcast, because that's what helped me out, like, you know, getting started on this journey to the point where four years down the road, I'm doing my own podcast. I'm telling people my story and all these things that I've learned along the way through my mentors and my peers that honestly I look up to and I listen to what they have to say, because a lot of them have what I want out of life. I don't listen to people that don't have what I have in life. Yes, I have conversations with strangers all the time. Yes, I'm a very nice person. I love to hear people's stories and hear about them, what they do. But for someone to give me advice that doesn't necessarily have what I want out of life, it it kind of is irrelevant. Yes, I'll take any consideration. I really think about it because you can get little snippets of advice. Like one thing I heard was, you know, don't let necessarily look at the messenger, but look at the message. That's something that Ed Milet said. And I really, like, for the longest time, I was like, no, I'm not going to listen to these people because they don't have what I want. But at the same time, I will listen to the message now because, you know, you truthfully, the Lord or universe, whatever you believe in, they might, you might think that the message is going to come in a different way. But at the same time, you have to realize, like, you don't want to look at the messenger necessarily because the message could be absolutely great, but it could be from someone that you don't respect or they don't have something that you want out of life. And you might miss that message. But if you just listen to the actual message itself, instead of looking at the messenger, it can make a hell of a difference for you. So it really helped me out with finding balance or quote unquote balance within my life was when I was doing 75 hard. I was actually able to realize how much time I was actually wasting with being able to fit in two workouts a day and eating clean and all this stuff while tackling my power list and still, you know, doing a ton of different stuff with my business and coaching and stuff like that. It really made me realize how much time in a day people are wasting and people are like, yeah, Oliver, how do you have the time to do, you know, two workouts a day and do all this stuff on top of running your own business and all this. And it's like, man, you guys just don't see how much time you're truly wasting. Like if you, the one thing I could recommend to anyone is do 75 hard and it'll show you how much time you're wasting because right now, even if you aren't, are working out once a day and then you go to twice a day, you'll see that, you know, just by simply cutting out little things that don't serve you, like, you know, watching, binge watching Netflix or, you know, just, you know, sitting around twiddling your thumbs or just, just stupid little shit that everyone does every day and they don't realize how much time they're actually wasting. When you start to allocate that time to things that is where you find the balance. 
that is simply where you find the balance in life is, you know, looking at where you're wasting the time and allocating that to whether that be self-development, your business, or just, you know, whatever you got to do, you can allocate time. Everyone's given the same 24 hours in a day. You look at high functioning individuals and you're like, man, I don't know how they do it all. And it's like, they just allocate their time. They don't waste their time doing, you know, the things that, you know, the average person does because they don't, they know that that doesn't really serve them there. If it's not bettering them in some way, shape or form, they're probably not doing it. And Andy talks about the power list, how that has been a huge thing for him throughout his whole journey. And it's been huge for me. I look at it like it's my personal Bible. I look at that every day. There's five critical tasks that I have to do every day. It doesn't matter what time of day I finish those. I can finish them super early and then I have the whole day to do whatever I want. And on those days are the days that I find balance. But since I like my routines and I like to fill my schedule pretty full, that way I'm staying busy. I don't have time to just, you know, waste time. I'm always trying to make sure I'm moving in the right direction, being aggressively patient while my cannabis processing facility is getting, you know, finished up and stuff. I'm trying to do whatever I can to make sure I stay consistent, stay on point, stay on this journey that I want to be in. Because otherwise, you know, I don't want to sit around and waste time. But there are days where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to crush this power list and I'm going to go do what I want today. That's my balance. And for all of you guys out there that, you know, they, you struggle with finding balance or you think that I don't have balance in my life. I have plenty of balance in my life. It's just not the type of balance you look at it. Like there's different ways of balancing your life. And the way I balance my life works for me, whatever balance you find in your life works for you. At the end of the day, my life is my life. Your life is your life. I'm just here sharing my story and hoping that I inspire you to become better because ultimately deep down, you know you can become better. So I want to wrap this up with saying everyone's got their own different balance in their life. And if you're looking to find more balance within your life and you're an entrepreneur, take the little time throughout the day to find your balances. That's what really helps me is, you know, taking that 10 to 15 minutes with that self-visualization, you know, reading, journaling, meditating. That is the balance. You're not going to find balance with partying. You're not going to find balance with doing drugs. You're not going to find balance with sitting on your butt doing nothing. That's not balance. Balance is finding out things that, you know, when your energy levels are low, picks you back up, finding more fulfillment, joy in life. And if you aren't someone that currently does a, you know, power list or something like a critical task list, that is how you're going to find balance is by accomplishing those five things every single day that's moving you towards your goals. And then guess what? You can find your balance after you're done with that. Do what you want with your time because, you know, we are here to live. We aren't here just to work. But so many people look at me and like, Oliver, all you do is work. Well, guess what? When you have big goals and dreams and desires, what do you want to do? You want to do whatever it takes to get there. And that's what I'm currently doing. So I hope you guys, you know, took a lot from this one. There's really no such thing as balance, especially in the entrepreneurship world. A lot of people struggle with finding balance, whether they're just working a nine to five or not. And those people that are working a nine to five, the balance you need to find in your everyday should be the balance between taking care of your body, taking care of your mental health, taking care of your family and friends, and then still working your regular nine to five and making the most of that. So that's what I got for you guys today. I appreciate you all taking the time out of your day to listen to it. I like to keep the episodes short and sweet and direct to the point. Um, one thing that I ask is I will never run ads on this podcast. The only thing I ask from you guys is I operate off value exchange. So if you find any sort of value, uh, you know, any good takeaways, any knowledge or anything like that, the only thing I ask is that you leave a five-star review and then you share it with a friend. Uh, that's the only way I'm going to be able to continue to grow this show. And I truthfully enjoy it because everyone's got an amazing story. And I hopefully that mine inspires you guys to become better. Happy Monday, everyone. I hope you guys all have an amazing day. And I will talk to you guys next week. I love you.